are getting some good offensive opportunities. They've only Niagara's only forced one turnover. Yeah, uh, Eagles quite obviously look to uh, to go inside. You know, judging from what they've done thus far, they've been trying to work the ball inside, work the ball inside to Jones and to Francis, and it's, it's been quite effective. Uh, Vermont, on the other hand, a little bit of everything, including uh, some 15-footers by Calavita. Pat Jones, a leading scorer for Niagara in the uh, last outing with, against New Hampshire with 25 points. And uh, as you mentioned, Mike, off to a hot start tonight. So far, Calavita has been uh, managed pretty well by Niagara. That What they're doing, Niagara is, uh, is packing it in with Tony Francis. And, and kind of like a matchup zone with uh, Francis sticking on Calavita, fronting him on many occasions. And Vermont passing the ball in. Niagara was not back off the bench. And a mad scramble to get back in the defensive position. Substitution Sean Ciano in now at center. And Francis out. Carl Hare also in a forward position for Niagara. Chandler just into the game. Nails the shot. 21-15, halfway through the first half. And again, a matchup zone from Vermont. Carol Hare, a turnaround. Didn't waste any time putting that up. Turnaround jumper from about 12 feet. Oh, and they throw it away. Number 35. Out of bounds. Mark Donovan, again, was afraid of the trap, threw the ball back. The Vermont player didn't want to touch it for fear of an over and back violation and winds up a turnover anyway. Niagara leads by eight, 23-15. Carl Hare doing a lot of pushing and shoving, frees up Sean Ciano for the turnaround, too strong. Henry taps it up, he's gonna be called for a foul. Henry's first, Niagara's third. Number 24, Mark Henry. When Carl Hare comes into the game, he adds a certain aggressiveness to it. Oh, no question about it. Gets himself in a lot of foul trouble, but can be exciting offensively, and again, he's one of those 110 percenters when he's out there, especially offensively. Three-point attempt is good from White. Kenny White. Three and the lead is cut to five, 23-18. White shooting 31 percent, uh, taking the majority of Vermont's three-point shots. Derek Bavard drives off balance. No foul called, Vermont comes the other way. White gives off this side to Donovan. To L. Back to Donovan. Now they bring Calavita out. And his shot is good. Basket by Donovan. Calavita's first field goal of the game. They uh, announced that Donovan got the ball, but he really just set the pick to bring Calavita out to nail the shot. 23-20. Keith Tarico waiting to check in for Niagara. Shiano. Back out to Rios, he'll try three. Too long, rebound, jump ball situation, jump Carl ball. Hare. Possession. Niagara will retain possession. Credit that last basket to Joe Kelly. Hare and Chandler Vermont. both came down with it. Number 20, Mike Lubis and Niagara gets the, the ball. Derek Brevard will come out. And Mike Lubis, another three point shooter in for Vermont. Lubis was starting at the beginning of the year, but really slumped badly, especially offensively. And Coach Tom Brennan, he's taking him out of the starting lineup. Guards not shooting well at all. Uh, White at 38%, Lubis at 37 Donovan at 37 Sean Ciano, a nice move to get Calavita off his feet, goes to the basket and draws the foul. Falls oh, charge to number 42, Brad Chandler. Chandler gets called for the foul. Chandler with one, uh, Vermont with four this half. Number 43, Sean Ciano really been tearing it up from the uh, free throw line this year. Especially over the last nine games where he has made 20 of 22 for an over 90%. But of course, as soon as we say that. Why do they give us these stats, Mike, whenever we use them? It's just... Uh... You just picked up where Bob Lorry left off, that's all. 24-20, <laughs> Niagara still pressing. They force a trap. And oh, God, two travel violations uncalled there. Niagara comes up with it anyway. Tariko to Rios. Back to Carl Hare! Misses the dunk. A blocking foul called on the man laying on the floor. 
Dangerous play there. Brad Chandler. If you take a look at Carl Hare, he's a pretty muscular looking guy. And he likes to tear the rim off when he comes in on a dunk. Hey, you gotta give uh, Chandler kind of like a medal of valor for standing substitution number 33, Kevin Roberson, back in the lineup for Vermont. He had uh, Hare's knees around his shoulders then. Carl now with three. Brian Bleach about to come back in. There makes the second. He's averaging a little over seven uh, minutes a game and scoring 3.2 points per game. Some games he just comes in and just tears it up. And some games his aggressiveness gets him in foul trouble and Coach Andy Walker has to settle him down. But interesting player to watch, Carl Hare. Very, very entertaining. Uh, again, I didn't see the Colgate game, but I understand he put on quite a show. 26-20, officials timeout with 7.51 remaining in the first half. The uh, Eagles lead it. They fell behind in the game, 5-0, but uh, came right back to uh, take the lead at the 17-minute mark and have not trailed since. Niagara on the year... Uh, Shooting uh, pretty good from the floor, 45.2%, but on the other hand, uh, opponents have been shooting better uh, to the tune of 48.1%. Eagles uh, quite a bit down uh, again, as, as you had mentioned uh, this year from the free throw line, only 67.9%. Last year led the knack in free throw accuracy at about uh, 77%. Uh, and it certainly cost them uh, in... in, in in a couple ball games, a uh, point loss here, a couple point loss there, a three point loss there. Uh, that all adds up. This time, Coach Andy Walker sends his troops out before the uh, buzzer to put ball back in play. The Catamounts try to catch Niagara on their uh, last inbounds possession after a timeout, but Andy ready for him this time. And a shot from the corner for three is too short. Bat back out and picked up by oh, Lubis. Good play by Roberson there to keep the ball alive. Rios knocks the ball away. Bleach comes up with it. Niagara's on a break. Three on three. Rios pulls it back. Inside, Carl Hare goes along the baseline. Finds room. Shot is blocked by Calavita. And Catamounts bring it back up. That's Lubis with the ball going one on one with Rios. Donovan loses the handle. Carl Hare comes out to pick him up. Niagara in a man to man defense. Tarico guarding Kenny White. And there's be a foul. Yeah, good call by the official there. Roberson came out and uh, tried to extend his arms to set a pick. And the official spotted it. Roberson now with two, Vermont with uh, five. Vermont with six, rather. Keith Tarico at the point guard for Niagara now. Sean Chiano at center, Bleach, and Carl Harrod forwards. Mike Rios at the two guard. That's Tarico with the ball. Hare looking inside of Shiano. Shiano's posting up Calavita. Tries to go baseline. No room. Pulls it out to Bleach. Rios comes to help out. He's double teamed. Gets room to drive. And dishes off. Boy, he had a shot and just threw a pass to nobody. A pull up three pointer. Oh. No good. Shiano with the rebound. Up court to Rios. Rios gets tangled up with Bleach. And a foul will be called on Kenny White for reaching in. Rios had uh, hair all alone on the right side, but uh, he did not see him. Just seems that Mike Rios, when he does penetrate, just doesn't want to shoot. That time there was nobody in his way to lay that ball up, and he passed the ball, I presume, to Sean Chiano, who was fronted in the situation, really had no chance of coming up with the ball. Yeah, exactly right. Rios looking for his first points. Niagara already in the bonus situation. Rios for the one and one. Gets the first one. And there you see leading by seven. Time remaining in the first half. Niagara led by eight at one other point here in the first half. And they match that lead here. Niagara will press. Derek Brevard comes in for Rios. Number 10, Derek Brevard in the lineup for Niagara. Balls into Lubis. They'll try and trap Calavita right there, but they get the pass off. Lubis walked a little bit. It didn't really have the handle. Now it's 
shot along the baseline is good. Kenny White worked himself free and hit the 12-footer. White and Donovan, seven each high for the Catamounts. Jones on the bench with 11 for Niagara. Niagara passing the ball around the perimeter and wait for a cutter. Carl Hare comes through, too far out. That's Brevard in the corner, into Shiano. Shiano working on Calavito, a little hook shot, no good. And the rebound is called a jump ball. The possession will go to the Catamounts. Possession to Vermont. Substitutions, number 22, Matt Johnson, and number 24, Chris Kappas. Matt Johnson and Chris Kappas in for Vermont. Tom Brennan rotating his troops against this Niagara pressure. That's Juan L with the ball, pulls it back. And now Kenny White. Shiano fronting Calavita down low. Now Calavita gets room, gets around. He misses the shot, but Shiano fouled him. Shiano's first, Niagara's fourth. Calavita Cal looking for his third and fourth points. Shiano had Calavita fronted on the near side, but Vermont quickly worked the ball around the perimeter to the outside. Calavita beat Shiano over there, took the pass, and went up for the shot. And uh, one of the officials faked out on the, uh, the hesitation free throw. <laughs> kind of just puts the ball up at the... It's hard to do. You, reaches you, you, up and then... You're in a situation where you're shooting it and then you're not shooting it. Shooting with all wrist action, no leg or uh, arm movement, really. 28-24, Niagara leads by four. 5-12 remaining in the first half. Derek Brevard's free for a jumper. Basket by Brevard. Brevard now with six. Niagara again in the pressure. Calavita midcourt brings it across. Now Keith Tirico guarding White. Niagara's back in a man-to-man. -man. White left-handed shot almost goes and a foul is called. That's uh, two he's had in and out. Ball's charged. It's number 20, Keith Tirico. White, uh, known more for his outside shooting than his driving. Again, he's not noted for his quickness, but he's been able to move inside on a couple of occasions. Freshman from Staten Island. That's the lead to five and one more opportunity. Misses it, Tony Francis pulls down the rebound. Derek Brevard will bring it up. And now Rios will play the point guard. Looking for some motion in the offense. That's Bleach with it back into the game. Inside, Tony Francis goes on this side to Bleach, and he walks. White scored 75 points in one game last year. As a high school player. <laughs> the press guide indicates scored 75 points in a single game versus Susan Wagner. I don't know if he was playing a pickup game or... Uh... <laughs> now nah, we can't make those comments. The shot is short. Derek Brevard goes up for the rebound. Rios brings it up. He's gonna take it all the way in and he's short with the shot. Rebound to Kappas. Shot, no good from Johnson. Brevard picking up his first foul. Niagara now at six. Fouls charged to number 10. 3.53 remaining in the first half. First Niagara leads by five. But Matt Johnson going to the line Substitution. Number for Vermont. Mark Henry comes in, in the lineup for and Niagara. Carl Hare is out. 22, Matt Johnson on the line. Shooting two. Johnson gets the first one on the year. He's 80%. Now has two points in this game. Which is his average coming off the bench. And the lead is down to three. 
Derek Brevard in the corner, goes inside to Tony Francis, and two consecutive travel violations called against the Purple Eagles. So Niagara goes to a trap defense. They try and trap out top, almost forced a turnover. Hulandale comes out to pick it up. And now he's going to drive right in the lane and pull up for an easy shot. He missed it. Ball's tipped up. And finally, Tony Francis gets it. Boy, he just snuck in there untouched. Wide open. Niagara almost forced the turnover with some good defense, and then they lapsed and almost paid the price for it. Mike Rios. To Brevard, out to Rios. The ball is knocked away out of bounds. by uh, Kappas. Niagara will attain possession. 2.58 to play in the first half. Brevard to inbound. Tony Francis inside. No foul called. He missed the shot as he fell to the floor. And here come the Catamounts. Defender actually was just standing in position, didn't even know that Tony had the ball. Tony tried to go over top of him, missed the shot. Calavino shot no good, but followed up and in by Kappas. And it leads down to one. Kappas had good position inside. 30-29, 235 remaining in the first half. Brian Bleach is free for a moment. And his shot is good. And offensive foul, wipe away the basket. Ball's charged, number 33. Bleach's Brian first foul. His first. Mark Donovan back in for number Vermont, and Donovan Matt Johnson gets a break. Calavita to the bench also. Calavita with only four points really hasn't been a factor. Number 42, Brad Chandler in the ballgame now. Spells Calavita occasionally. Three-point shot too long. There's the man we just mentioned. Pulls it back out to Kenny White. Chandler not nearly the threat that Calavita is out there. There's a three-point shot from Donovan, no good. An offensive foul called against Raheem Huland L. And that's his first. And uh, as you can see, Vermont not afraid to throw it up from uh, three-point land. Raheem Huland L. His first. It's fired up five or six of them. Uh, guys, you need a little ball down at this end of the court to shoot here. There <laughs> they go. Substitution number Henry did a line looking for his Calavita third and fourth points. For a short stay for Chandler. Calavita's back in. Henry on the line, shooting the one and bonus. Mark himself another free throw. Mark uh, continues to be Niagara's leader from the free throw line, uh, hitting 85%. Nails two there. Niagara again will press full court. Calavita gets it across. And Poulandel loses the handle, so pulls it back out. Kenny White working against Rios. Francis has got Calavita fronted. Bleach helping out on the backside. Now Poulandel goes into the lane. Shot is short, tipped up. Campus shot up and in. Basket by Campus. So, second opportunities turn into points on the last two catamount possessions, and they trail by one, 32-31. Mark Henry with the ball. Vermont getting quite a few offensive rebounds. Derek Favara tries to drive. He's double teamed, and the shot is blocked. Goes right to Tony Francis. Calavita rejects it. Loose ball. And Francis recovers. Gives off to Rios. Good hustle by Francis after the loose ball. Goes inside, he has a shot opportunity now, goes to the basket, hook shot, Brevard tips it up, no good, and the rebound to Kappas. E Eagles with about four shots there, but uh, nothing going. Now Calavita inside, strong move, no good, Francis with the rebound. Rios pushes it up to Brevard, and he pulls it back out. Niagara probably playing for one last shot. 42 seconds left in the half, the game clock and the shot clock uh, just three seconds apart. So Vermont will have little or no time to run a final play. And Verm Rios just holding it out there. And Vermont content to let him. 
Now they'll go into the offense with 17 seconds on the shot clock, 20 on the half clock. 12 seconds. Brevard to Bleach, Rios from three. An NBA three-pointer. Six seconds left in the half. Here come the Catamounts. Two seconds, the shot. Rios oh. fouled him. the shot and is fouled with no time remaining. And that is a team mistake for the Eagles. The kind of thing that can come back to haunt you. The buzzer hasn't sounded yet, but there's no time left on the clock. White can go to the line and get a four-point play. There wasn't any doubt in White's mind who was going to take that last shot. Rios, you know, you want to come out and put a hand. Struggling defensively in the first half keeps the Catamounts in it. And Coach Tom Brennan came into this game feeling that this was Vermont's best opportunity since in his three years to come in and sweep the Western New York teams. He just felt that... He was catching Niagara at a good time, the way they've been slumping lately. And after Canisius' emotional loss to Siena, he thought this could be the time for his team to come in and steal a couple victories. And uh, obviously, this team with the confidence factor out there tonight is showing it on the floor. Well, he's, he's halfway there. I'm sure he's content at this stage to, to, to be tied with Niagara uh, and has a good chance uh, of upsetting the Eagles at, at, in this uh, Western New York trip. 35-35, Andy Walker will find the uh, defensive adjustments. We'll look for some defensive adjustments at halftime. We'll be back with the second half. Stay tuned for our halftime feature on Niagara University. institution offering both graduate and undergraduate programs. Founded in 1856 by the Ascension fathers and brothers, Niagara has evolved into a major university with an enrollment of approximately 3,000 students. Niagara University is a special place. It's a caring community where friendships are born, where the faculty's interest in the student is deeper than academics, and where the nurturing of the total person is fundamental. This is Vincentian tradition. This is Niagara. Welcome to This is Niagara, a series of programs highlighting the special features of Niagara University. I'm Marty Troya, and today we are at the Bascaglia Castellani Art Gallery on the DeVoe campus of Niagara University. Joining us today is Shirley Melston, the Curator of Education at the Gallery. Shirley, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Marty. Shirley, uh, the gallery is indeed a special place, and I wonder if you would tell our audience how the gallery got its name. Well, the gallery was donated to Niagara University in 1978 by Armand J. Castellani, who many people may know is the founder and chairman of Top Supermarkets. Mm -hmm. And his partner was Mr. Biscaglia, who, and Mr. Biscaglia passed away in 1967. So hence we have the two names, Biscaglia Castellani Art Gallery. Oh, I see. All right. And uh, what kind of art does the gallery exhibit? This gallery mainly focuses on contemporary artwork, Marty. Uh, however, we do have several pieces from other periods which act as educational stepping stones to understanding the more contemporary or modern art forms. Oh, I see. 
Um, would you name some of the artists whose works are on exhibit here? Some of the artists that people may recognize are, for example, Charles Birchfield, who is, uh, was a very famous artist from Buffalo. Uh, there is also Andy Warhol. People may remember his soup cans, <laughs> of which we have one here, by the way. Uh, we have uh, Pablo Picasso. We have Jean Dubuffet. And those are just a few that people may recognize. Oh, very good. Uh, I know the gallery is open to, to the public, but does the gallery become involved in the local community in any way? Very much so. Uh, that is certainly part of our mission here. We have several museum outreach programs. We work with the school districts in the area and bring programs to them and have the children come and visit the gallery. We have programs that we do in the nursing homes uh, for those that are living in nursing homes. And then we have uh, tours for any, any kinds of groups that may request one. I see. Um, you do offer guided tours then through the gallery so that you can explain some of the artworks to uh, any groups that want to come through? Absolutely. Anyone and everyone is welcome. Very good. Uh, when is the gallery open? Really? Our hours are Wednesday through Saturday from 10 to 5, and then Sunday 1 to 5. Oh. Is there an admission charge? No, there isn't. <laughs> And if someone wanted to get more information about the gallery, what would they do? They could call the gallery during our business hours, which I just gave, and the number is 284-2816. And generally, anyone that answers the phone would be very happy to help them or direct them to the right person. Shirley, thank you very much for telling us about Niagara's special gallery. And thank you for joining us today on This is Niagara. Please be with us the next time when we will fo focus on another feature of Niagara University. Thank you.